Well, welcome back to the lab. Tonight on the bench, we have a, another 7000 series plugin from Tektronix. This one happens to be a 7A26. Took it out of the box already, but um, still in its rough state. Haven't cleaned up any of the... Uh, pan up just a little bit. There's some sticker residue on top. I got stickers on the side. Some of the other things here. Um, overall condition of this one, the BNC jacks looked good. They didn't look like they had taken a hit or anything like that. These knobs commonly get cracked. These are okay. On both of these, they push like they're supposed to. And the position controls move. This knob is completely destroyed. Um, actually, here's another... 7A26 and what they're supposed to look like together. So as you can see, this knob is completely destroyed. So is this one. That's what's supposed to be here. So we'll have to address that. I actually have some... I was able to source these two knobs. This is, this is a two-part knob because this one adjusts the triggering source and then this one adjusts the channel operation given that this is a two-channel amplifier. You have alt chop uh, and add operations. Couldn't remember if that was add or subtract. And those are set by the outer knob. Triggering source is set by the inner knob. Most of the time you can leave it on mode. So then depending on where you have the mode set, it'll set the trigger source correctly. Or you can force trigger on channel one and channel two. These particular plugins are two channel, 200, 200 megahertz of bandwidth, one mego, in, one mego input. There is a faster plugin than this. I believe it's the 7A24, but the 7A24 does not have the one mego input, so it can't be used with probes. It's 50 ohm. Haven't put it in a frame yet, haven't plugged it in, haven't done anything to it yet, so. Figure we get into it, throw some signals on it, see how it was behaving, and then see if I'm sure it'll need a calibration. Um, and we'll calibrate it. The frame I'm using to calibrate it is a 7904A. It's a 500 megahertz frame. Plenty of bandwidth on the frame to calibrate these guys. You can calibrate these on a 7603, but the 7603 will limit them to 75 megahertz plenty fine to use in them. Um, you just won't get the full speed out of them. To get the full speed out of them, they have to be in a 79 series frame. They will work in a 7700 series frame, but in a 7700 series frame, they're only 150 megahertz. So what I will do is I will get the cover pulled off of this one, all of the adjustment points on one of these. You only need the extender for one step. cover off real quick <clears throat> you only need the extender for one step because all of the adjustments are on this side of the board so you don't need to get to the other side of the board so you can do 99% of the calibration from the leftmost slot in the frame so what you do is you take the frame out uh, take the side panel off and then that'll the plug-in you're working on. This is just going to fill a void. The plug-in you're working on goes in here. This side, this way. And then you can get to all the adjustments on the side here. This cheat sheet is in the service manual and I'll be referencing this often given that I will have to adjust all of these. A at some point, all of these adjustments are going to be touched during the calibration procedure. On the vertical side, the calibration procedure is actually pretty quick. Um, I've done a bunch of them, so it's not a it's not a huge deal. But uh, I'll turn the scope on, and we'll throw some signals on this and just see what we get out of the unit, see if it blows the scope up, see if uh, 
and we release the magic smoke. Hopefully not. Uh, let's see. Left, left, A, and left. Um, turn the intensity down. Yeah, we should be good there. I don't know if you guys saw it when it started up, but all of a sudden I got a whole bunch of triggered and the trigger light was flashing and things like that. So I don't like the way that looks. And th there we go. There it goes. I don't like the way that looks in the beginning. I think we may have some problems in this plug-in. Okay, I'll give the screen some brightness. And that's not good. We have a flickering trace, and I have the inputs grounded. Okay, well, I was on, I was on add, so that's interesting. So if I move it over to channel one, we get stable, everything looks good. Move the trigger source down to channel two. It's not flickering like crazy, so we may be good. Let me uh, start up my square wave generator and we'll throw some signals on it and see what it looks like. Well, I've got channel one set DC, 10 millivolts. I have a little signal coming in. Up. And we have a bunch of nothing. Okay, my square wave generator is not outputting, it doesn't look like. It's not even on. One moment, let me troubleshoot some electric on the lap. Be right back. Okay, there was a trick of the light. The power strip looked like it was turned on, but the UPS that powers that power strip that drives the 106, the 191, and the 184 somehow turned itself off. So, the scope is behaving normally. We do not have any problems as of yet. Let's see what happens. Oh. Well. Wonder if that's way off the screen. Yeah, it is. It's way off the screen toward at the bottom. All right, I need to knock that signal down a little bit. That's why part of the reason why it looks like crap. 10 X attenuator. And there we go. Okay. Well, that actually looks pretty good. A little bit of tilt. Not bad. Nothing to yell about. Let's see if our 5 millivolts is there. 5 looks like it's there. All I'm looking for right now is that the amplitude is changing as I'm adjusting the volts per division. Oh. Okay, we got a little bit of noise in the switch. A little bit of noise in the switch. Could use some cleaning, probably. Although it's cleaning itself right now as it's rubbing. Yeah, give it a little bit more amplitude. Bring it down some more, yeah. I'm 
take this attenuator off. This one looks like it's in a lot better shape than the last one I did. The last one I did, the high frequency calibration was way out. These were curved down like these were curved down like this. The compensators were pretty awful, or the compensation was pretty awful. But I was surprised. I thought it had problems, and it actually co ended up compensating pretty well. So everything's nice and solid. I think a good flushing with alcohol and letting it dry will be a good start. Let's check channel two. Crank that all the way up. Bring this down to two. Go with DC. Now, since I'm going to be stepping the volts per division down, I'm expecting to get more signal or more divisions as I step it down, and I'll have to turn down the square wave generator and put the attenuator back in. So that's healthy. That's healthy. That's healthy. That's healthy. Yeah, that's healthy. Okay, I'm going to put the attenuator back in. And turn up the signal some more. That's a little noisy. So just tapping it, putting a little bit of sideways pressure on it, gets that to jump around, and that's moving just a little bit. So I'll have to deal with that. That's healthy. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, everything looks okay. Um, all the attenuators are there. All the ranges are there. Let's see if AC works. It does. How about the top on channel one? Yeah, it doesn't want to trigger. Ooh. Oh, I'm not. I was in chop. Okay, so we have good trigger. Oh, I was in alternate. That was the problem. There's no, because the knob's destroyed, there's no marker telling me where I'm at on display mode at the moment. So that's what's going on there. However, um,. Let's see. Oh, that's only channel two. Yep. If you notice, I'll zoom into the fuzz. Let's see if I can get it to focus. 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 There we go. If I turn on the bandwidth limit, the tray sharpens up. Give it full bandwidth. The trace goes a little fuzzy. That's just the amplifier itself. However, that's telling me that the bandwidth limit switch is working. Uh, do we have invert? All right, so if we have invert, it is moving, which means we are inverting the signal. Uh, I can exaggerate that by adjusting the symmetry of the waveform. And there we go. So the wide waveform is on top. Now it's on the bottom. So our invert switch is working. That is inverting the waveform. Okay, so at least the two-minute preliminary check-in of the plug-in. Obviously, this is not in calibration. Um, this has been banged around, bumped around, knocked around. But the the BNCs look okay. They're not 
noisy. I'm wiggling the signal source a little bit. Let's see, go back up to channel one. Yeah, the BNC is nice and solid. Um, let's check probe. See if the probe ID works. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, so the probe ID works with this little pin here. There's just a resistor in there, and that resistor tells the scope what attenuation of probe you put in here. This one's a hundred X, and this one's a ten X. So if I put this in, if I put the ten X on, it should go to twenty millivolts. So if I pull the 10x off and I put the 100x on, if it's if the 100x is supported, it goes to 2 volts. So our probe ID is working. Let's check probe ID on channel 2. Kick this back down to channel 2. Um, interesting. Well, there's a fault. Okay, so we have our first thing to look at. I'll pull a schematic, and we'll see what's going on. We don't have any readout on channel 2. If I turn it to channel 1, 20 millivolts. Turn it to channel 2, nada. So, sweet, something's broke. Finally, I get to fix something other than just calibrate it. So, let me pull the schematic, and... Uh, Take a look at where the probe readouts are generated and um, or where the readouts generated in channel two. And then we'll go from there just to prove that it's the plug-in and not the scope. I hope it's the plug-in and not the scope. Yeah, it's the plug-in and not the scope. So there's where we should get our readout. This is the other 7A26 that I had just sitting in the frame. There's where we should get the readout. We have readout. We don't have readout. So we'll dig into the plug-in. Let me pull the schematic and look over the readout, and then I will be back. Well, that's boring. <laughs> All right, well... Pop the plug in back in just to make sure. Or I, I popped this plug in, my test plug in, in got readout. Popped the plug in that was under test, got readout. So that means most likely the problem with the plug in is a dirty edge connector. So I'll be cleaning that for sure. Yep, readout's working. I see where's my 100x probe. Here it is. Two volts. So readout's working. So dirty edge connector. So what I'll do is I will get some Q-tips and we'll clean up the edge connector before we get started because obviously you do not want to calibrate a plug-in with a bad edge connector because that will just cause you all kinds of grief during the calibration process. Okay, I've got the attenuator network exposed. Uh, we've seen these before. The main difference between a dual-channel plug-in and a single-channel plug-in is there's two. That's, that's pretty much it. It's the same circuit, just instead of... It's pretty much divided in half, right here. And then this is one channel going back to the scope. This is the other channel going back to the scope. You have these four ICs, which are the amplifiers. And you have another set of four ICs, which are the amplifiers, for channel two. Attenuator network, attenuator network. It's, it's the same stuff, top, bottom, so... Nothing major there. I took the covers off the attenuators. Not going to go too much further into here because I can actually get the aerosolized alcohol in there and I can, I can blast it apart. There is a warning on here. Not blast it apart. I can blast the switches clean. If 
take a look at this warning. Clean switch contacts with only isopropyl alcohol or cleaners in the manual. There it is. So the cam switches up top are meant to be kept dry. Do not use contact cleaners, things like that. ISO only. Uh, if you leave a film, if you leave a residue on them, you can very much change the frequency response of those switches, and this is a high-frequency plug-in, so you do not want to do that. So I will get the ISO, clean these up, exercise them a whole bunch, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, and um, one other thing. There was crap on the edge connector. That's probably what was keeping my um, readout from working. So all that black stuff came off of this edge connector right here. Just isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, run it up and down a few times. You definitely, whenever you have one of these open, you want to be mindful about static. I've built a ton of computers. I've worked on a lot of electronics. I have never sparked anything. I'm conscious about static, but I'm not overly paranoid about static. So handle the stuff as little as possible. Always handle it by the metal, things like that. But beware, these ICs, they are static sensitive. So you want to handle them as little as possible. All right, I'm going to get this cleaned up, and then I will be back. Okay, well, I've had the scope warming up for several hours. I've had the calibration gear warming up for several hours. We'll be using the 106, the 503, and the 506. Won't need the time mark generator for this because we're doing a 7A26. Not a time base, so we won't need time marks. I've got Cal document, adjustment points. Yep, we'll touch every single one of those. A couple of adjustment screwdrivers. This should be everything we need other than the extender, which will only be used for one procedure. Before I jump right into the calibration, I'd like to say thank you for everybody who stopped by and subscribed to the channel. Um, let me know how I'm doing. I read all the comments. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. I'll see what I can make happen. But uh, thanks for stopping by. So with that, let's get into it. As with every calibration, it starts with a preliminary procedure. In this case, it's display mode to channel 1. And I'm going to make some mistakes on this because the knobs haven't come in yet, so I'm going to do this blind, but we'll see how it goes. Triggers mode, so that one's not going to have to be changed. Channel polarity is up. Bandwidth is full. Positions are mid-range on both channels. Volts per division is 10 millivolts. Here's 10. And AC and DC is DC. That concludes the preliminary setup. So... Okay, first is DC balance. Uh, channel 1 is first. The DC balance on channel 1... DC balance on channel 1 is 1353, which is here. Channel 2 is down here, so it's the same thing, same position. Here's 2. Here's 1. Right there. So that's the pot I'll be adjusting. I'm sorry, it wants to do 2x DC balance first. So here and here are what we'll be adjusting. We do both of those. So it wants us to center up this trace. Okay, so it wants minimum minimum shift when I move this from 10 to 5. So that's actually pretty good. So just to show you guys what happens on this, if I mess this up, if I move this, 
It goes way out. So, probably get it a little bit closer, but not too much. And I'll turn the readout on so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're at 10 millivolts. The time base doesn't matter. 5, 10, 5, 10. Okay, so that's pretty much perfect. Do that to channel two real quick. Leave it on five millivolts for channel one. Actually, it wants me to do 1350. So this is the variable. Send that, pop that in. Now they want, as I'm rotating this completely end to end, you can see it moving just a little bit. And that is perfect. That doesn't need adjustment at all because it's moving. I'd probably say less than 0.1 divisions, maybe a 0.01 or a 05. So that one is good. Now we switch over to channel 2 and do the same thing. There will be a lot of that because this is a two-channel plug-in. So just do what you need to do and then do it on the other channel. I'm not even going to mess with that one. That one's... Turn on the readout real quick. We're down here now. That one's fine. It, the spec is it's not supposed to move a half a division, so a half a division would be way up here. So when I switch it, it shouldn't move within up here. But it's... That's all it's moving, so no need to adjust that. And we can probably trim that up a little bit. It's within spec, but I could probably improve that just a little bit. So that's the channel 2 DC balance, R2353. No, I'm sorry. You don't do the same thing here. So what you do for... This one is at 5 millivolts. The trace should not move more than a half a division when I hit the invert switch. It does not. And it does want minimum trace shift, but this one is adjusted for minimum trace shift on invert. We're st we are going to adjust 2353. And there we go. We improved it just a little bit. Now it doesn't even move off the center line. So it was off just slightly. So we kick that back to up. And now we bandwidth switch full in 20 megahertz, and it shouldn't move less than half a division. We're not, we're barely moving at all, so that's fine. Full bandwidth, polarity up. Now we're checking the channel 1 and channel 2 gain. For this, I need the PG506. So let me get that hooked up, and I'll be right back. All right, so what we're dealing with here is I have 20 millivolts of signal coming in. Now our amplifier is not well matched. That's why if you look very closely, you can see a slight tilt this way on the trace on top and on the bottom. So because I haven't done any of the compensations yet, that's kind of why it's tilted. My reference points for here are the very tail end of this square wave and the very tail end of this square wave. So that's my, or the tail end of this and the tail end of that, those are my reference points. So we're a little off. This should be exactly four divisions of display. We have, we're not off by much, but we'll give it an adjustment since we're here. On this particular adjustment, the adjustment's actually on the front panel. You push the variable in, turn it till it engages the gain control, and then it's a fine tune from there. 
So what I will do is I'll position this real quick, just like that. Now I just have to turn this till it locks in. There it goes. And now I can adjust the gain. That looks good for channel two right there. Yeah, that looks perfect. So we set it to AC now. And now it wants us to check invert. Oh, it's checking for amplitude for polarity gain, so you may need to readjust positioning. However, our amplitude looks perfect, so we do not need to adjust polarity gain. And I'm judging that here and here, because I would be referencing here and here. Otherwise, but I can move the position here real quick. Yeah, I need to adjust that a little bit more, actually. No, there it is. I was just off a little high. Okay, my geometry is a little weird on the frame. If I look at this tail end, but then I look at this tail end over here, if I move the trace over, this comes up a little bit. So my geometry, the 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 plugin is bowed, or the um, CRT is, is is bowed a little bit. So I guess that means after I'm done with this plugin, it's not enough to affect this calibration. But when I'm done with this plugin, I'm gonna have to do the frame. If you guys want me to see, if you want to see me do this frame, this is a. 7904A, 500 megahertz frame. If you guys want me to dive into this one and take a look at it, let me know in the comments, and we'll see what we can make happen. So it wants 10 millivolts of division, but then a 50 millivolt input signal. We need to adjust the channel 2 2x gain, which is 2317. Here's the label, and that's my pot right there. It's good we're checking the plug-in, but this plug-in is actually not very far out so far. Okay, now we move to channel one. We do the same thing. We know our cable's good. We know our signal's good. Because if I move it back down to channel 2, there's our waveform. But if I kick this up to channel 1, we have nada. I'll just do a little bit of press checks on the board real quick. Ooh. Interesting. That's noise. Does say I'm on.
That was strange. Jack looks like it may be messed up. If I'm moving the... What's happening is I'm moving... There it goes. Moving the cable, and I'm losing the signal. So I'm going to dive into that, and if I find anything interesting, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I've got the cam switch exposed for the attenuators for channel 1. I have the attenuator set to 10 millivolts at 10 millivolts per division. As we can hear, well, you guys can't hear, um, but I got it, the meter in continuity mode. And if I test from here to here, I should have buzz. Actually, it's from here to here. I should have buzz. I have no buzz. There's buzz. There's no buzz. Let's see. No buzz. No buzz. Buzz. So I have a couple of sections where the cam switches are have lost tension. Common problem in these. So... It's kind of a pain in the butt to get in here because you have to loosen up all of these. But I have to get this cam switch out so I can adjust the tension on all the spring fingers. I'm not going to mess with channel 2 because channel 2 is working just fine. So let me finish tearing this down. I This was the fault I expected. This is the fifth or sixth plug-in I've had with this exact problem. And all these attenuators are the same thing. Given their age, the fingers have just lost spring tension. So... I hosed this down with alcohol the other day, but we have some that are lifted. Uh, they're not making contact, so we'll have to get in there and bend them a little bit. So I will get that done, and then I'll be back with the calibration. And this is why a lot of people don't like working on these older plug-ins. I've got the switches exposed down here, but this is how far you have to tear them down. Um, the cam switch is out. I made a mistake. i got to index this get this re-indexed and then set back up. The stops on the cam switch are actually on the back side, not the front side, so I need to get that re-indexed on the cam before I put it back in, but you gotta tear the whole thing apart. The front panel's over here. Um, all the knobs come off the front. There's a pot that has to move to get at the last two screws, so it's a pretty big process to tear one down this far and get into it, but we're into it, so i got to fire up the soldering irons, take this cover off, because then I can get to these switches. And then we will uh, we'll at least see if um, I can get some tension back on these. These are the ones that needed to be retensioned. Um, so kind of involved, but not too bad for a 200 megahertz plug-in. So I will be back. Okay, after the tensioning adjustment, I have continuity between the two points I need. Those two points are right here at the front of this cam switch, then to all the way back here at the back of the rotor. So I have continuity there. I'll zoom in on that so you guys can see what I've been working on. So I have been adjusting these little switches as this rolls. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it. So right here, this guy, as you set this, these switches cam up and down um, to set the attenuators and all that. So got to get all the knobs and things put back on. Get this all bolted back in. Get that all. Get the uh, back end of the bracket mounted. You have to be very, very careful when you're working on one of these attenuators because this is right here. This is free floating. I zoom out. So the only thing that's holding this circuit board in on the back side is that ground pin and then the two signal wires before they go in the amplifier. So you can't push too hard on there or you'll crack that whole board. This board you have to use isopropyl alcohol to clean. It's a sensitive circuit board. There's also more finger switches on top for the attenuators. If those end up being problematic, those are actually pretty easy to get to. So I won't have to tear it down this far to get to those. It's the, uh, if you don't have 10 millivolts, you're back here. That's the pain in the butt part. So I will get all this put back together, 
and then we'll get on with calibration. Okay, we are back, and I have gotten the front end of the 7A26 fixed, and I started over on the calibration document, redid the whole thing up to step three, which is checking channel one and channel two deflection error, or deflection accuracy. That's where we're at right now. Anytime you tear one of these things apart, I'm going to need to, uh, because I tore the front end apart so far, I had to start over, throw the, throw the whole calibration out, start over. And it's a good thing I did, because on channel one, the gain adjustment and the 2x gain adjustment, they were out. So this is the tail end of the channel one gain adjustment. So I'm just into checking the vertical deflection, making sure all the attenuators are working exactly like they're supposed to. So I'm going to go through that real quick. I got to do it for channel one and channel two. So there's going to be some repeat stuff in here, but it's just what you got to do to check in one of these things. But yeah, I will uh, we'll get that going here real quick. And uh, I did find out, I've been talking to a couple of the guys on the Techscopes forums, this 7904 is out of calibration. So I'm actually going to have to calibrate this frame. So if you guys are interested in seeing the calibration on a 500 megahertz frame, let me know in the comments. And uh, if there's enough interest, I will record a video on that. There's some neat ceramic hybrids in the amplifiers in here. The, the construction of this thing is actually kind of kind of wild to get the 500 megahertz out of the out of the frame but um yeah it's kind of crazy so let me uh get the camera zoomed in on the graticule and i will uh be back here in a second when we check the vertical deflection okay at the checking the vertical deflection at the five millivolt setting 20 millivolts of signal we should have four lines now my reference point don't mind the tilt in the waveform yet. You'll notice it's kind of bowing up at the bottom and it's flat on top. The, we have not done the frequency response of the amplifier yet. So my reference point is this right here and that right there. I'm just being consistent using those two points, but that's what I'm looking for. So at 20 millivolts, it should be four. 50 millivolts should be five. Twenty millivolts should be five. Fifty millivolts. Oh, wrong dial. Oh, we have a problem there. Do we have a problem with my calibrator or do we have a problem with the scope? That should only be four divisions and it's almost five. So there may be more problems with this plug-in. That is just sometimes the way it goes. Well, the Rigol says calibrator's working. So time to go digging in the plug-in some more. This one's going to fight. Ah, well, we'll get it. I will be back if I find anything interesting. Okay, well, I found the error. I've had the plug-in out for quite a bit tonight. Um... Everything was checking normal, everything was checking all right, everything was checking exactly like another plug-in, all the resistances were checking, everything everything was matching, and I was scratching my head trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, turns out when I did the uh, quick cal to catch back up, I miscounted the divisions, and I calibrated it to, I did the initial 5 millivolt cal to 5 divisions instead of 4 divisions, so that threw off the rest of the attenuators, so... Easy enough to do. Uh, while I'm talking about it, I will put a text in the video. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that was technician error. This is actually 50 millivolts. Turn the readout up real quick. So you guys can see 50 millivolts, four divisions, exactly what it should be. Let's see, point 0.1. That should be five divisions. Point two should be five divisions. Point five should be four divisions. There we go. Point 
One volt should be five divisions. Perfect. Two volts. Should be five divisions. It's perfect. Five volts should be four divisions. That's perfect. So the attenuator is working exactly as it's as it's supposed to. Technician error on that one. Uh, I'm going to check the other half. I won't bore you guys with that. And uh, then we will move on to step four, which is variables. So let me get through that, and then I'll be back. Okay, and we are back in the lab. Uh, this is a couple days later. Had some uh, stuff that happened, but uh, we'll get back to back to getting this calibration done. So we're up to step four, which is checking the variable volts per division. With the variable control out, we need two divisions or less of deflection with it all the way down. And we get... about... 1.7-ish on channel 2. So we are good there. And if I flip it to invert... We should have two divisions or less, which we do. And now we just do the same check on channel one. Much less. So we are good there. And we go on to step five, which is just checking trace identification. So I have to turn the readout on for that. Put that back in. Push the identification button. And That's unfortunate. Nothing's happening on the identification, so I'm... It's another thing we'll have to troubleshoot, so... Two is working. That's what should be happening. The tray should move up about a half a division and it should go to identify. Channel one's not working at all. Let me see if I can force it to work because the way this works is it just shorts the sense ring to ground so yeah I had a feeling that's gonna be a problem so the identification is actually a um, the, all the circuitry is working the switch is not so let me see what's going on there and I'll be back in a little bit Okay, and we are back with that open. It was a pretty boring repair. Um, channel one, push the button, push it in. It shifted up, shifted down. Turn the readout back on so you guys can see that. Push the button, identify. So we have our identification there. The switch was too far forward on the shaft so the button wasn't going in to make enough contact to actually trigger the function. So it was not a, nothing inconsequential. I just had to adjust the um, knob further back towards the case. So we are back on to the low frequency compensation of channel one and two.
Okay, so because I'm using a PG506 as opposed to a Type uh, 106, because the PG506 is caled into one megaohm, that's actually not going to work because that's a 50 ohm terminator, so I'm not going to have a matched impedance. I will need to warm up the 106. Okay, so what I will do is I'm going to warm up the 106, and then I'll be right back because I have to, because I'm doing a low frequency calibration. This does need to be impedance matched. So all the way to 50 ohms to the scope. And we should be good. Just move this over here. I will let that warm up for so with the 106. 10x attenuator, not on the fast rise, just the standard amplitude with a 50 ohm terminator into the input of the scope. And the adjustment we're going to make once everything's warmed up is for the flatness on top. I'm, oh, the adjustment we're going to make since everything's warmed up is the flatness on top, which it's actually pretty flat already. These are nice and flat. We'll see what we can do about um, they want to adjust for minimum tilt either way. You don't worry about the bottom, you worry about the top. So we'll get that done. I got to let that warm up. Okay, and we're back with everything warmed up. The adjustment points are here and here. Low frequency, 13 or 1431, 1436. The easiest way to find them on the board is these two big resistors, and the pots are on the opposite side of the resistors. So... I will brighten this up real quick. And we want about six divisions of display. So give it some more power. Next thing I'm going to do, because I'm having some trouble with it, is I'm going to pull that 106 down, and we'll go through that. Oh, that's the very front corner. Okay, that looks about good there. My reference point for that one was this front corner right here. So now we need to do channel two. That needs a bit of adjustment. So I'll use this very front corner as a reference. Twenty-four thirty-six and twenty-four thirty-one. Twenty-four thirty-six is here. Twenty-four thirty-one is here. So there's your two resistors. There are the two pots we're adjusting. Right there. That looks about good for there. All right. Moving on, I'll need to add a RC normalizer to the chain. Amplitude control is noisy. 
Okay, so for the attenuator compensations, we're going to be dealing with, and it's mirrored, the this particular C130, this particular piston capacitor right here, and these capacitors in the attenuator networks. These are on top of the um, attenuators. It's mirrored up top. This is this is channel one, so I'll be doing the same adjustment on channel one. There's the piston compensator. Do these, do these, and you are looking for at five millivolts division. It's C130. And to be perfectly honest, other than the amplitude gains, this is probably the most important adjustment of this plug-in, taking time to get this right. Okay, and comparing the compensation, my compensator was out. My RC normalizer was out, so. Oh yeah, that is a very noisy control on that 106. Ugh. Okay. Okay, that's the best squared up corner. So we'll check 10 millivolts. Again, the reference point is gonna be this top corner. Yeah, 10 millivolts looks fine. All right, 20 millivolts, we're doing C106, 107. That needs a little bit of adjustment at the very corner. Sorry about bumping the camera. At the very corner, it's tilting up, sweeping up like this, so that we want to compensate out. Uh, 106, 107, those are all the way in the back. Now this bottom one is the right at the corner there. So I'll get that adjusted. The top is if you have some major tilt. I'll detune that just so you guys can see what it looks like. So like if it's, that's real slow on its response. So you want to tune that back about to there. Now the bottom's tilting down just a little bit, so I want to bring that bottom tail just ever so slightly up to right about there. Actually, that's a little high now. Bring it down. And there we go. All right, so right about there. 50 millivolts, C110, 111. This is the 5X compensator. <laughs> Off a little, but not bad. There we go. Point one is C14, C15. And 
and that's pushing that attenuator about as far as I can go. So uh, for the next ones, I'll have to back the uh, back the 106 off and then take the attenuator out. 114, 115 is the first 10x attenuator. These are not very far out. These are actually really in good adjustment. Some of the plugins I've done, they're, they've been way out. I mean, I've had square waves drooping down the screen this way. Point two is just a check to see what it looks like. The reason it's a check is because you're, d you're using the 10x attenuator we've already adjusted and the 2x attenuator that we've already adjusted, so it's just checking how they're working together. And that looks perfect. Point 0.5 is a check, same thing. It's checking that first attenuator plus the ones we've already done. That needs, that's a little, just a touch high. Okay, so I just adjusted the 5x a little bit. One volt is the other 10x attenuator, which is C18 and 19. So we'll click that in. And that does need some adjustment, which we can go ahead and give it. Because it's tilting up. Yeah, that one's actually pretty far off. There we go. Okay, so we have to do the exact same thing on channel one. Um, I'll run through it. I don't know if you guys want to see both channels do the complete plug-in, but I will run through. I'll run through channel one real quick. Won't talk as much, but um, knowing my editor, they will probably uh, fast-forward it just so you guys can kind of see it because it's the exact same thing we just did on the just on the other channel. So. Five millivolts is okay. Ooh, that's out. That's actually out pretty badly. And so is my uh, 106. Yeah, this one's actually out pretty bad. I'm not shocked that this is out. This is the attenuator that I had to work on the most for this plug-in, so this is actually in 
decent shape considering how much I had to work on it. Yep, that control needs cleaned. Okay, so that completes the, the attenuator compensation. Now we have high frequency compensation, which needs a tunnel diode pulser. Through a 5X, connect the pulse generator. So my tunnel diode pulser, all this does is generate fast edged waveforms. from the square wave generator into the pulser, into a 5X attenuator, into a 50 ohm terminator. Do not get this backwards. One of the most common reasons that these blow up is when somebody hooks them up backwards and it burns out the tunnel diode. Um, if you have to use a male-to-male -male BNC, you are not hooking it up correctly. On this particular one, the High frequency compensation is great. I am not going to mess with it. That is, there's no aberrations. Everything looks really good. So now it wants me to plug into an extender, but since we didn't do any adjustments, 
Um, I'm going to skip down to channel two. I will check it both on the extender flipped. I'll check them both at the same time. So I'll just skip this over to channel two real quick and we'll do the same and we'll take a look at it. Channel two looks perfect as well. So I am actually not going to touch the high frequency compensation. This one, this plugin is in really good shape. I'll get the extender and we'll just check the two reversed, make sure we don't have any bad, uh, sure don't have anything unexpected. The one reason you need the extender for this one is you have to switch these two leads. So you want, you need to switch A11 and A13, A11 and A13, so you can see they cross here. You do the same thing on the B side, B11, B13. I'm gonna move the camera here real quick because this makes this plug-in super long. And I've got some more five, uh, five X attenuators coming because the B and C's on my five X one are uh, pretty worn. It's working for now, but it's not gonna be working for long. So that looks perfect again. We'll check one. That looks perfect again. So this, this plug-in is looking in really, really good shape for the high frequency compensation. We don't need to mess with it. Always when you're pulling the plug-ins in and out, make sure you turn the scope off. It's hard on the transistors but also minimize the amount of time the scope is off because you don't want them cooling off. You don't want the transistors cooling off while you're doing a calibration because every all the calibration should be done at operating temperature. Okay, I'm getting everything set up for the common mode rejection ratio. Uh, we're on channel one. Give me some trace, ooh, lots of signal. Uh, roll this down. So it wants 50 megahertz. There's 50. And we want eight divisions of display. There's pretty much eight divisions. Bring you guys back into the middle. All right. Actually, I need two. Um, need two BNC cables. So I got to hook 50 megahertz up to both inputs on this one. Okay, now we're hooked up. So we're adding the two signals together, and we're inverting channel two. And what we are looking for is eight divisions of uh, point eight divisions of display or better. We're at point four, so that is actually very good. So we have a good common mode rejection ratio. Everything is healthy there. For step 10, they want to check alternate mode. And I just want to make sure the traces are alternating at both sweep rate, at all sweep rates. So in essence, all we're looking for is two lines.
this is actually they're they're going like I can see them but it's um the tube is I need to bias this tube this tube's getting a little dim so that's why they're disappearing so alt's working everything is good it's just uh the uh, the fastest sweep rate showing both um both traces that's really pushing the frame cuz we're up at 500 picoseconds so there's not much time on the phosphor so that is actually working uh chopping between them is working Checking trigger mode. So what they're doing is they're checking the trigger mode switch. Going to put one kilohertz sine wave into the bottom. And that's what we should see. We have a triggered waveform on the top. We have an untriggered waveform on the bottom. So that is actually working very well. If I kick this over, there we go. Just get some adjustments here that make sense. Okay, so we have a triggered square wave on the bottom. I flip it up to the sine wave. And I can trigger on the sine wave, but I can't trigger on the square wave. So my trigger, trigger source operation is working just fine. And everything is good. And if I set it to mode, it'll actually trigger on both, and both are stable. So my triggering control is just fine. We're into step 13, which is the bandwidth check. Actually, these are actually easier with an untriggered signal. Six divisions of display at three megahertz. That's three megahertz. Now I need six divisions of display. go. Now, because we're on a 900 series, we need to be better than 200 megahertz because it's a 7904. So, we're going to wind it up to 200, and we need more than 4.2.
That's 200. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4.5, so we're actually good. So let's keep winding it up and just do a bandwidth check. It's about 4.2 right there, so 3, DD, 3 dB point of channel 1 is actually 220 megahertz. So that's perfectly healthy. If you um, are missing bandwidth on one of these, like you do this test and it's low, usually it's a the high frequency compensation needs to be adjusted. The, the it's tuned too low. You can get cleaner square waves that way, but obviously the plug-in's not as fast. There's ten. Channel two. It's a little high. Call it right there. That's three megahertz. So we'll do the same test. Wind this up to 200. There's 200. We're just a touch off on channel two. Try those settings again real quick. Now I'm a little low on my amplitude. I'm doing this through the screen on the camera, so I didn't get the right traces. That didn't make sense given how the um, high frequency tuning was for it not to work. So get down here again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six divisions. Test this again real quick. Yeah, 4.8, so I didn't have the test set up right, so that is fine. Where is our 3 dB point? 3 dB point of channel 2. Channel 2 is actually doing better than channel 1. There's 4.2, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry, 1, two, three, four, and then point two divisions. So our three dB point on channel two is actually 239 megahertz. So a little bit of an overachiever. So our bandwidth is set, which means our high frequency compensation is set well and the plugin's healthy. On these, this is this and the high frequency compensation are really where these plugins need adjustment. I've fixed a whole bunch of these usually in the trigger circuit the positioning the identification stuff like that that doesn't have a problem somebody can have fiddled with the gain so the gain and the high frequency compensation and the bandwidth if those all check out okay you are usually good with a plug-in obviously before you use it for hypercritical measurements you should do a full system check for your equipment just to make sure you have confidence that it's 
working correctly, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this. So the bandwidth check is the last step. So this plugin is actually done. Everything looks healthy with it. And this is ready to go into service. Well, customs wasn't backlogged this time, so the new the two new knobs have come in, so I've gotten them replaced. So everything's all finished up. Got a calibration sticker on the plug-in. Everything's ready to go. This gets to go into the next project, which is sitting under the bench hiding. So I have a surprise waiting. But um, so thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'll check the comments below if you guys have any questions. Let me know. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.